All right, here we are, and it's October 6th. Um, the reason why I'm out here today is to kind of introduce the beer I made uh, about a month ago. Um, the beer I made was the, uh, an IPA using the Cooper's Lager Beer Kit. And what I used to hop it up was my own homegrown um, Centennial hops that grew behind me against this uh, garage right here. Um, yeah, I've done it before, but not with the, not as wet hops. So I was pretty excited to see how this one turned out. Um, I picked the hops on September 5th and uh, made the beer on September 6th. Today is October 6th. Um, I've already tried a few samples of it, but uh, the beer turned out really good. So, I mean, I, I'm very pleased with it. Um, but having said that, what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you uh, my process. I did record some footage on it, so if you guys are excited, you know, want to see what happened or anything. Um, anyway, today I'm going to see the uh, Monday Night Football game, and I'm pretty excited about that. So after this process of watching what I did with the beer, my previous footage and everything, I'll give a little taste test, and then in about uh, four hours from now, I'll be watching the football game. So. Um, you know what I thought I might try and do? I don't know if any of you have all heard of Periscope or not. I've got a, a Periscope account. It's, uh, it's, it is make beer. If, uh, if you get this before the game and you know, you're curious about watching this uh, Seahawks football game from my seats, just, you know, you might check it out. So again, it's make beer um, on uh, Periscope. So uh, might be fun. I got pretty good seats, uh, different perspective, seeing it actually from the game. So check it out. Cheers. Okay, so today's flash brew is a DIY flash brew IPA. And for my ingredients, I have uh, a lot of fresh hops just picked yesterday off my vines in the backyard. Two pounds of Brees Golden Light Dry Malt Extract. Six ounces of carapils, um, one can of Cooper's hopped lager beer kit, one kg of uh, Cooper's brew enhancer one. And uh, so my process will be to steep the carapils for about half an hour in uh, pre-boiling water or just under boiling water. Um, and then from there, with the dry malt extract uh, and the brew enhancer one, cook some of the fresh hops, probably uh, one and a half ounce of fresh hops for about 45 minutes, one and a half ounce of the fresh hops for 30 minutes, and then maybe uh, an ounce or so for the last five minutes. And uh, I will also dry hop the beer with some... Uh, uh, dried centennial hops from last year's harvest. Well, that's the plan, and here we go. Okay, so before we make the beer, um, what we need to do is obviously sanitize our fermenter. Uh, anything that the uh, ingredients come in contact with, etc. And I had some one step, and my uh, I've already sanitized my fermenter. Um, I still I have still have some one step in the fermenter now, the DIY fermenter, the Cooper's DIY fermenter, um, and you can put some of the liquid in the top of the lid and drop anything in here when uh, when or as you're using it. So just uh, FYI. And so let's go off to start making that beer. Okay, so I got the um, carapils in the pot and uh, gonna let this steep for about, uh, I don't know, half an hour or so. And then I'm going to strain it and uh, get my hops and dry malt extract and uh, brew enhancer one in the mix. 
And that's it for now. Okay, so <clears throat> I just uh, finished steeping the uh, carapils and pouring it into another big stock pot. And then from here, I'm going to uh, bring this to a boil and add the brew enhancer one um, and the dry malt extract. Okay. Okay, so the first addition is the uh, brew enhancer one and uh, Thankfully, it's not a brick. It's pretty soft. So we're just going to cut that. Add it to the mix. Water's not boiling yet, but get it all dissolved in it. All right, and then I'm gonna add the dry malt extract. Make sure it's dissolved. Dry malt extract clumps up a lot. You can really smell the malt. Okay, so what I've decided, we, I'm gonna I'm gonna use two ounces of the, of the fresh hops. They seem to be uh, uh, taking up a lot of space, so I'm a little concerned about how much of the brew kettle they're gonna take. My plan is to take two ounces and add them every five, um, a quarter ounce every five minutes, and do this over um, a 40-minute period. So that would be eight increments. Um, and then I would continue boiling for another 10 minutes after that. So 50 minute total boil. Okay, <clears throat> so I underestimated my hops. My scale, <laughs> I was misreading it. I actually used about one pound of these uh, fresh centennial hops and I put them in, in about four ounce increments, quarter pound increments. Uh, but I only used one, so one pound. So that was uh, four increments of them. And I'm going to continue boiling for about another 10 minutes. Um, and then what I'm doing here is I, I took the remaining hops and I'm putting them in my dehydrator. So I'll have stable hops for the future. Um, I have some Centennial hops from last year, which of course I'm going to add uh, uh, dry hopping. Um, I didn't want to wait. Um, and use fresh hops because they won't be so fresh when I dry hop. Alrighty. Okay, so I just poured the wort off through my uh, strainer, and uh, these are the these are the hops. It's um, and uh, the the water's just seeping through. So 
After this, I'm going to add the can of uh, Cooper's, Lock, um, Cooper's Lager and then top it up to 23 liters. Cheers. Okay, so here's the beer now, and um, it's tucked away. Um, I filled it up to 23 liters, did a little sampling. Now, the, the hopped beer kit, uh, it actually had an expiration date of 2013, so it's two years, or not an expiration, but a best before. But I had been keeping it in a refrigerator for about uh, 12 months or so. I don't think it, it's going to be an issue. Um, and I used a fresh Safel yeast um, sachet. Uh, so at this point, um, I think everything's good in about five days or, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, 10 days or so when the vigorous fermentation is complete, I'll add about, uh, two ounces of my fresh hops, which have been recently dehydrated or are being dehydrated as we speak. So this DIY flash brew, uh, took me about an hour and a half longer than usual, but, uh, I was filming and... You know, I um, uh, did a about an hour boil, <clears throat> and then I had to fill up, etc., and also the cleaning. Um, the last time I made it, I made it, I did it a little bit different process, and I used all dehydrated hops. Uh, that was a really good beer, though I have to say, just using the Cooper's Lager uh, Brew Enhancer One. Um, a couple pounds of dry malt extract and uh, lots of these uh, home uh, grown centennial hops and I tell you it tasted as good as any store bought big time IPA it was really sweet um, so I'm hoping the same with this fresh hops we'll see what happens and uh, I'll follow up and uh, keep making clips for this film uh, for this uh, brew maybe uh, maybe the kegging version uh, kegging in an add-on we'll see what happens cheers so uh, yeah here uh, anyway I've I've got uh, a sample to try out um, I uh, bottled like five or six of these in the uh, Cooper's PET bottles that uh, I have from uh, few years back and uh, you know use the Cooper's carbonation drops they uh, work consistently well um, I also kegged the rest of it I made about six gallons so it was a, it was a pretty high volume beer um, I'm speaking off the cuff right now I, I think what I did was the Cooper's lager beer kit I used uh, some dry malt extract and I used brew enhancer one so it's a pretty high gra it was reasonably high gravity beer I'm guessing around seven to eight percent alcohol um, and then tons of wet hops. So uh, this particular bottle I opened yesterday, so it's been sitting over a day, and I just wanted to show you kind of what, it, what happens after a day in this bottle. You can see it still has some gas, okay. Uh, high citrus flavor in there, very lemony because they're centen centennial hops. You know, when I, when I made the beer, I was focusing on kind of a continuous addition process over probably an hour as I recall I again I was doing this off-the-cuff beer and it really turned out quite good um, right now obviously the heads kind of low because it was a beer that I opened yesterday but it still keeps a little uh, carbonation in it you can see the carbonation coming through um, it's not the clearest in the world but uh, looks good to me um, very very citrusy smell very lemony um, I didn't do a lot of front-end bittering hops on it. I did bitter it in addition to the bittering units that were available in the uh, in the Cooper's Lager kit. I'm guessing it's probably on the lower end of a of an American IPA, but close enough, but heavily flavored with the uh, uh, back-end flavor centennial and aromatic hops. So, cheers. Ah. Uh. Yes, very tasty. You know, I mean, really, I'm not a high upfront bittering taste kind of guy anyway. I like more of a refreshing style. So to grab the, you know, fresh hop flavor part is more important to me when I'm doing this style. Very good, actually. So uh, anyway, like I said earlier, if you want to, you know, you catch this video in time uh, to see that my plug on the uh, Periscope thing I'm going to do. Maybe I'll be out there, check it out. Uh, it's my Periscope handle is Make Beer. Um, going to the football game, who knows? Anyway, 
If you've never seen it from a fan's perspective, check it out. Cheers. Mm. Good beer. Probably a lot better than some of the beer I'll get at the stadium, but I'm only going to drink one beer at the stadium today. Cheers. Mm, beer.